Hey, what's up? My name is Toby and be welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to show you how you can build your first augmented reality application. I'm just opening my notebook because I wrote the steps down in case that I would miss something. I can just take a little look and uh, be sure that everything is running. So we are going to use the Unity game engine for this um, tutorial. If you don't have any um, experience, if you've never used Unity, I'd highly recommend to go back and watch some basic tutorial on it. Because here we uh, are going to um, already go in depth in it. And um, if you don't know how to use it, it will be kind of hard for you. Uh, but I'll try to make it as um, easy as possible. And the next thing is that for this tutorial, we are going to use the light chip ARDK um, from Niantic, uh, which are the people who made Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go is also made in the Unity engine, so this is their software kit that they give to us developers for free, which is pretty nice. So before we can start developing, we'll have to first of all make an account at lightchip.dev. I'll put all the important links in the description. So it's free and uh, it goes very fast. So this is the first thing you need to do. And after that, you will be at this dashboard where I'm right now. And um, then we'll need to create a, um, a new project. So we can just go to projects and then create a new project. Uh, then we we'll can name it. Uh, and also this is the most important thing we can um, need to um, copy the API key or copy it later on when we are in Unity because if we don't do it, we're not able to develop. Okay, so then we need to go down to resources, downloads, and download the actual software kit. After that, we're gonna import it into Unity. So the most current version is uh, 2.5.1 at uh, the time where I record this tutorial but I'm going to use the ARDK 2.3.2 as this is the one that works the best for my computer. And if you also happen to have a, uh, a MacBook with the M1 series, then this is, from my experience, the most um, stable version right now. Uh, this also obviously works on Windows and um, on, um, on your operating system. It might um, work better uh, with even the 2.5 version and uh, also for this tutorial all these versions should be pretty much the same. So then the next step is to download it and um, if you're using the most latest version then you also need to download the example scene, the uh, mock uh, environment um, and then um, if you take the past releases as I do you can just click on download and then everything will be included there. Okay, so after downloading the ARDK, the next step is to create a new Unity project. So I started my Unity hub and I'm gonna select new project and gonna just make it standard 3D project and maybe call it the um, AR app um, Live Studios, let's say. Uh, and then um, we just wanna create the project uh, at the location we want. So once that is finished, we're here in the uh, default scene view. And the first thing we need to do is to switch the build platform. Uh, so go to file, build settings. So then switch to iOS or Android, depending on what device you have. In my case, I have an iOS and an iPhone. So just switch the platform. Also, we should click on add open scenes. So we already have this scene as the one that's going to be built on the phone. Um, then if we are on iOS, we need to click on player settings. I'll also leave some information in the video description what needs, uh, needs to be done for Android. Um, but for the most part, this part is for iOS only and there also will be an Android only part, which I'm going to show you later on. So we need to go to the play settings, scroll down, and then we need to fill in this usage usage description. So for AR use, let's say, um, this is because um, when you open up app, there will be this little pop-up that says, hey, this app wants to use your camera or maybe your uh, location data. 
and um, this is basically what we need to fill in otherwise the app won't work sadly okay so let's close this one and then um, we are ready to import the um, ardk so we can go to assets import package custom package and um, then navigate to the folder choose ardk 2.3.1 uh, or whatever you want to use then uh, import it then there will be this little pop-up we just import everything and um, once that's done we will also import uh, the other packages which are the um, mock environment package so let's import this one and then also import the examples package so just double click import and here we go so the very first thing we will see is a um, error message this is because we now need to insert our development key so we're just going to do right click create folder we're gonna uh, call this one resources and then double click create another folder call this one um, ardk double click create ardk ardk auth config enter on that one and now we can paste oop, that's not the right one we can paste our key so go back to the um, lightship website go to your project uh, and then copy the api key and then just paste it here and now if we will clear the error messages there's no one popping up anymore the next step is uh, to delete the main camera as we're going to insert a special AR camera created by Niantic. So we will go to projects, ARDK, extensions, prefabs, and then we want to insert the AR scene manager. All right. And then we can just right click and reset the transform so it's in our field of view. Shift F to zoom and um, so this is basically the brain of the whole ar scene and we will attach some components to it so we will be able to place objects in the real world um, if we now go to game view we also see that everything is black and we can already change the aspect ratio to some kind of phone and then let's go back to the scene so the next step will be to um, go to our AR scene manager and add two components, which will be the AR plane manager. So this one is going to detect real world planes, uh, for example, a table or the ground, a wall, and um, will visualize uh, it in, uh, with a 3D objects above so that we know that the um, phone recognized the object so we will select um, everything so not only horizontal or vertical planes but all of them and if we click on prefabs go to assets and to plane then there's the plane prefab already from uh, the uh, niantic team for us and then we can add another component um, which will be the uh, hit tester so AR hit tester. If you don't see this one, then you probably didn't import the example scenes because this one is not in the normal um, Lightship ARDK package. And uh, that we then need to open this one up with the AR scene camera, drag it in here, and um, hit test existing planes. That's fine. And we can quickly create a um, 3D object, for example, a cube. And um, as we can see, if we switch to the game view and move the cube in the Z space, it's quite big. So we might just make it a bit smaller, like maybe 2.5, then um, reset the position to zero. And um, we could just go into assets, create a new folder, call this one prefabs. And um, select the cube drag it in there delete it from the scene 
and then um, go to our AR scene manager, drag in the cube as a placement object. So what we've been doing right now is we've um, enabled the um, AR scene manager with the AR scene camera to detect planes in the real world. And then also if we would click on some of these planes, instantiate an object. In order to test this, we don't have to build it to our phones yet, but we can go to um, Lightship ARDK Virtual Studio and um, then we will uh, dock the Virtual Studio window somewhere here and then there should be some mock scenes. Uh, this is the mock environments that we downloaded and um, choose the living room, let's say, and um, let's see if this uh, works. So click play. And now we see an example scene. Uh, if we uh, hold the right mouse button, you can also pan around. And now let's see what happens if we click. Oh, okay, so it's instantiating these little cubes. So this is exactly how it should also run on the phone. But to make it a bit more interesting, we're gonna build a little scene. So um, for that matter, I'll go into my um, package manager and I downloaded a free car uh, asset. I'll put the link in the description from the Unity Asset Store. So go to my assets, um, I type in car. So once, that, once uh, that is loaded, we can just import it uh, like that. And um, then in this scene, we'll also create a little plane that the car is gonna be sitting on. Also here, scale maybe 2.5. And um, maybe we'll also can create a new material. So we'll make a new folder with materials right click create a new um, material maybe plain material and just gonna make a little different color so drag it onto the plane um, let's switch back to a single view here and um, let's make this maybe some dark blue could be cool and uh, also import the car so go to uh, this folder, then prefabs with colliders, and then take this racing car and also scale to 2.5 like that. So now we have a nice plane with a nice car. Zero out the uh, position. Um, and then maybe also zero out the position. Oh no, it's already zeroed out with the plane. Um, and now what we want to do is also give the plane a convex mesh collider and um, create the uh, get empty game object called car scene. Take the plane and the car, drag it in here. And then we're going to prefab that. So go back to our prefab folder, drag it in here. So um, now we will be able to place it whole scene. So if we go to our AR scene manager, you can just uh, drag that in to the placement object and then we can make it visible here. So um, if we will now run the game and click. Well, oh, well, it already overrode that the car scene is invisible, so that's not a good idea. We need to, uh, of course, um, delete this one and then take the one that's inside the prefab folder because otherwise it will uh, instantiate invisible objects, which is not too great. Uh, so, um, don't know where it is now, but um, seems to. Oh, it um, instantiated them somewhere here. All right, so there were some kind of issues with the offset. So inside the car scene, these um, positions were somewhere far off. But um, now if we go here, it should work. Yeah, so 
except that the car is floating, everything seems to work. So now let's make it a bit more interesting. Um, instead of just having this scene already, let's create, um, let, let's say we wanted to first uh, create a plane that's going to define our game area and after that instantiate objects. So the way that we would do this now is we would go into the AR hit tester um, and then we would do some manipulations here. So the very first one is we want to have two game objects. So just create a new public uh, game object and maybe just call it um, placement object two to make it easy. And we also um, create a, um, a bool. So bool, um, let's say um, plain placed like that. And um, finally, we will go down a bit here to the, uh, the pl um, place where the objects are going to be instantiated. And um, we want to say, so um, if plane placed, so if that is not, if uh, the plane is not placed yet, so if not plane placed, we want to instantiate the first object which um, is going to be the ground plane. Then um, if um, this is done, we want to set um, plane placed, oh, plane placed to um, true, true. And um, then else, we will instantiate the second object. So this one was, I think, with the, like that. And also, maybe we don't want to instantiate it on the ground, but um, we want to create a variable of um, vector three, which will be the offset object two. And this one will be a new vector three um, with the hit position x, then hit position y plus, let's say, 0.5 float, and also take the hit position dot z. Um, like that, and we want to put that into the um, the vector three where the object will be instantiated. Okay, so um, now we can go back into the editor, go to the scene view, and then, so the first object we want instantiated is only the plane. So let's go back into the car scene. Let's take only the plane and prefab it um, like that, plane. And then we also only have the, the racing car as our original prefab. So let's delete our car scenes. Let's go to the plane, put it on the first object and the racing car on the second one. And now if we will start the game and place an object and the first one should be a plane and then there will be the cars just falling down. The reason why they flying above the plane is because we have a convex collider and um, I think what we could do better is probably delete this one and take a plane, a box collider. And this one will be more flat, I guess. Yeah, so this one should be better. Um, so let's go back and uh, try this again. Yeah, that's a lot better. So now we have falling cars. All right, so how do we get this on our uh, phones? So um, if you are um, using a Android phone, you will have to go to the scene manager and add the um, Android permission requester. This is important. Uh, this is pretty much the same thing we did in the build settings for iOS. And then um, we want to go to file, build settings, make sure that we added the open scene that we're working on and then click build. And then we want to just 
search uh, folder that's suitable for that. So after that is done, um, so if you build to iOS, build to iPhone, then you will use uh, Xcode and um, you will also have to have that app developer account, which is free. I'll leave some links in the description on how you can build the app to your phone. But um, basically you just have to click on build and then um, we will head to the folder we want. So once that is done, we can just click on here, choose the uh, Xcode project to open. And um, then we need to go into the uh, top left Unity iPhone, then go to signing and capabilities, automatically manage signing and um, select your developer account. And then in my case, I have my phone connected wirelessly um, with the laptop and just click on build. And uh, once that is finished, you can use and test the application on your phone. So as you can see, the app is finished and on the phone it's working really nice. Obviously it always needs to have good lighting conditions and the better the lighting conditions, um, the better the application will be. That is pretty much a very easy way on how you can build your first augmented reality application. And from here on, there are much more tutorials, much more things you can do. And um, these are the first steps you can take if you're interested in building some augmented reality game or any kind of experience. This is a great starting point on that you can continue your journey. So thanks a lot for watching. I hope it was helpful for you and see you next time.